Hello, this is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com and today we're going to do a quick update video on my EDC belt. So the belt I've been wearing for the longest time is this belt from Core Essentials. I had this for I think a little over three years now and I wear a belt every single day. In, in total there might have been one week of the entire year um, that I didn't wear a belt. Like that's combining all the days together but I'm wearing a belt every single day so this belt really does get abused. Now after all that time of wearing it there's going to be a few points on every belt that has strain. The question is going to be what kind of strain and what does that do to the material. So the more uh, of the more common places of strain is going to be right in front because if you're someone who carries a gun then this area over here is going to get a little bit warped. You can see there's a little bit of a warping there. That's not from just a regular wrap around your body. That's going to be the warp of the um, the clips of the gun belt, uh, the clips of the holster, and the gun weighing down on the actual belt itself. But you can see that there's literally almost no sign of actual wear. There is a warping there because it was used in that spot, but there isn't a lot of sign of actual damage to the belt. You can also see on the other side, this could be where the spare magazine was. So for reloading, you're doing a lot more practicing of reloading. So you can see that the magazine strain has a little bit more of a strain over there, but that's literally it. There's very, very minimal amounts of damage showing to the actual materials. Now, this is the actual uh, inline that they use. It's the track line system. So when you put it in, it does incremental clicks. So you can really have a very, very pristine fit to your body. Um, and then there's a little tab on the bottom over here that you tap right over there and then it loosens it up. So this is great actually because if you're going to end up sitting down somewhere, as you're sitting down you can just have your finger right over there and then as you sit down you open it and that loosens up the system for you making it a lot more comfortable to be able to wear. So this is a very simple system when it comes to an everyday carry belt. Another small point of wear would be on the actual buckle itself, which it may be hard to see, but there's a lot of like scuffs. Now there isn't any damage, meaning it's still perfectly functional, uh, but it just, just ends up getting scuffed up for everyday use. So now the main reason why I ended up switching is because I didn't end up having an actual failure. So the most common part of wear is going to be right in the back because that's really gonna be where the, uh, all the bending of your body is going to be. So you can see there, it actually has a piece of plastic on the inside. And when I touch it over here, I can actually feel that the plastic is broken. It actually broke the inside of the plastic. Now, that's not really horrible considering I use this for such a long time and I'm using to carry a firearm as well. So you're not using like a regular leather belt. This is not a, re a leather, a regular leather belt. This is meant to be able to carry a firearm, be able to be as flexible as possible while still having adjustability. It's a specialty belt. Now, what's interesting is I actually reached out to Core Essentials and they said that since I guess it's been over three years that I had this belt, the plastic materials that they've been using have been upgraded. So this is no longer a standard, the inside of their plastic, because things have changed and they've modified and figured out what, what works best. So in comes the new one, which is, this is their buffalo leather material. There's a few different things about it aesthetically that I like, um, but also in regards to actual um, functionality. In regards to functionality, the internal uh, material this year, the plastic liner that's on the inside, um, is upgraded. So if I squeeze this, no matter how hard you squeeze, you can't actually get it to flex in half. This one, same thing. The areas that are not broken, you're not able to do that. You're not able to do that with. The only difference is that the, the the plastic clearly is going to be a little bit lighter of a plastic or material versus this one is still upgraded. This one still functions. If that didn't break in the back, that would have still have functioned perfectly fine. But you could see how this one does look a little bit thicker. So if I put them side by side, you could see that the one on top is a little bit thicker than the one on bottom. So it's a little bit beefier. Um, this one also has more of like a flat tone black uh, versus this one is a little bit shinier. They still have both offerings. You can get them in either material that you want. Um, this one is more of like a dressy kind of belt and this is more of like an EDC belt. You can still use them for both. Um, but like this is, again, this is still an available material. I just liked the matte look of this as well as also the buckle itself one is shinier than the other. So the one on the shinier belt also has a shinier buckle. This one, it may look not um, look similar on camera, but this one's more of like a matte kind of silver coating versus like a bright shiny one. So again, just kind of depends on the preferences. The best part about it is that older belt buckles, you're able to unscrew over here and remove, and there's different belt buckle styles that you're able to choose from uh, depending on what you want to use it for. So they do have like tactical line kind of stuff as well as also dress belts. Um, I've always used the dress belts, even though they're not rated to carry a huge um, like load. Um, if you're going to be using it for everyday carry, I haven't had an issue with any of them and they've worked really nicely. It still has the track line system. Uh, it just looks weird to me, honestly, just because I had the other one for so long. Um, I could see how like the, the small changes they made to make it better. And then the still very clear and tactile. I'm gonna put it next to the mic so you can hear it. Incremental clicks. Then the bottom over here, same thing. You tap that little tab over here, opens up very simply and it makes it work very nicely. So this is going to be about, I've already worn it for a few weeks now, but I'm going to run it a bit more to see the differences. I also noticed something that was different when I was installing it, is that the way that it works is that you see these numbers over here. This is the older one. You can see there's numbers. You cut it to the width that you prefer. So you can see this one as well. 
you cut it to the width that you prefer. This one is an engraving versus this one was printed onto it. So it's much harder to see. So this one you can see much better. The other thing is you can notice the screws. So if you look over here, I'll try to get that focus as best as possible. So you can see this one on the right is the newer one. This one on the left is the older one. The screws and parts over here, they all seem to have gotten much beefier. It might not be noticeable on camera, but this is much beefier of material than what I see on the older one. And they're also using a different threading type on the actual screws itself. So it was much more like locked in place when I actually installed it. So the whole coating and design seems to be very different. Um, as well as again, if I bring it back a little bit, you can see the engravings on this one versus the print, which is very hard to see on this one. That just shows that over the years they've really upgraded. So I'm very excited to see how this plays out and see how this works out for me because I really have been enjoying it so far in regards to the quality of it. Um, again, I, I do like this buckle style. They have many different buckle styles and colors you could choose from based on what your preference is. So if there's any change in this, any updates on this, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, but again, for, for right now, I don't see any reason why I'd be switching companies just because these have worked out so nicely for me and they're such high quality, really great customer service as well which it's always nice to see. So I'll see if there's any changes into this. If I notice anything different in regards to durability, uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update in regards to this newer design that they have and newer materials that they have. So if you have an older one, uh, I would say that as of right now, it would still be worth upgrading um, if that's something you're looking for. This is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com. Thank you for watching.